Let's talk about the state of C++ in 2021. Now, being one of the most influential C++ voices out there, given my videos have accrued eh, just shy of 2 million views, I felt that I should chime into the state of C++ in 2021. Now, that being said, as I've stated in my videos, I actually have never written any C++ commercial code. In fact, I haven't written much C++ code beyond Hello World, although I have recently cut and paste an infinite loop in C++ to express a certain uh, joke that I wanted to express. So yes, I, what I discovered recently that in 2021, C++ is actually a great language to use if you want to make jokes. It's pretty good that way. Um, it's great because it's such an archaic and cryptic looking language that only nerds will be able to get the joke. So you can hide some secret nerd jokes in plain sight and only the nerds will get it. So that's one of the uses of C++ in 2021, no question. So I highly recommend C++ in that regard. Now, C++ still being one of the most important languages today in 2021, drives home a point I've been trying to make for the last several years on the YouTubes. There is this obsession on YouTube that if a technology is more than five minutes old, anything beyond five minutes, that it's outdated and you'd be crazy to learn it because if you do learn it, you're never going to find work. Now, C++ being, what is it, a 40-year-old language now? Maybe long, maybe older? Um, it's still always in the top five at least in the top 10. No, it's usually in the top five most used programming languages today. So despite the fact that the young nerdlings across the web feel compelled to believe that older technologies, older than five minutes, are not to be used, um, C++ does prove that in 2021 that there's a little bit of a um, logical error in that assumption. Now, all joking aside, C++ is still widely used because when it comes to writing high-performant software that uh, doesn't require a huge footprint to get uh, great power out of it, if you will, uh, runtime speed, then C++ is one of the kings of the game. Now, the problem with C++ is that power comes with a great cost, and that cost is that your runtime speed, the speed at which it runs when it's the speed at which C++ code will run, the cost of that speed is write time speed, the speed or the lack of speed of writing your C++ code. Essentially, to get something out in C++ is going to take much more work than to get something out in other uh, languages, higher level languages like a Java, like a Python, like a C Sharp, like a PHP, uh, etc. Now, this is not a criticism of C++. It just gives you a layout of the land. Uh, C++ has its use cases. You use that to do certain things. Gaming engines, the core of an AI, if you will. Um, programming for small devices that don't have a very much memory. So I was talking to a friend of mine. He works for a company, and they'll have a piece of hardware that was shipped with only... 32 megs of RAM, not gigs, 32 megs of RAM. So they have to write very efficient code. So even if they could write it with Python, because of the limitation of the hardware, they have to go down and do it in C++. With C++ power, and it's very powerful, um, you have to take care of a lot of things. And that means there's a lot of bookkeeping as a developer, so there is a lot of bookkeeping for you to take care of. You have to make sure that your code is uh, managing its memory properly. It is, uh, you know, it's, it's, well, that's a big one, managing its memory properly. That's a lot, of, that's, that's one of its major vulnerabilities. So one of the big innovations of uh, Java was, I remember at the time, because I was around at the time, uh, when Java came out, is that it took care of uh, memory management. It had a garbage collector. So programmers didn't have to concern themselves about that. The cost of that, the cost of the automatic memory management, 
was that uh, there was overhead. So Java code doesn't run nearly as fast as C++ code most of the time, although I think some Java people, depending on uh, certain implementations, you may be able to find some pretty fast Java. But that being said, generally speaking, Java does not run nearly as fast, it has a much bigger footprint because it takes care of a lot of things for you, which makes it much more secure. So one of the arguments I've been making for the longest time is write time speed is more important than runtime speed most of the time. And the reason being is that CPUs and RAM and computers in general are just getting much more powerful. So the need for highly efficient code is uh, diminishing more and more over time. Again, that being said, again, C++ is still wildly popular and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So if you're learning C++ because you like that style of coding, then you are in a good position uh, in terms of job prospects or whatnot. So don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And let me just close off this video with another uh, fallacy of, uh, I don't know if it's a fallacy, it's not a fallacy. It's a fallacy of programming, modern thinking, at least with a lot of the young nerdlings, is that you can choose a wrong language. There's no such thing. There is literally no such thing except for maybe Ruby or ActionScript. Just joking about Ruby. You don't want to do ActionScript because, you know, who's, who's grading ActionScript? But even if you learned ActionScript for some reason, ActionScript 3, uh, which is the language used to for the flash runtime, which I think about three people use now, but even if you learn to code and program in ActionScript, that set of skills, that level of understanding, that comprehension of object-oriented paradigms and software development, 100% transfer to any other language. So let's say, we'll take a serious example now. I've been joking around a little bit in this video, so you have to decide which was me joking, what was truthful. But let's say, for example, this is truthful. You learn, we'll pick a language, you learn Java. Let's say you learn Java, that's what you were taught, and you write Java code for three or four years, whatever it is, and then all of a sudden Java, for some mysterious reason, disappears, which will probably never happen, not at least for another 20 years, and um, you have to do something new. But guess what? You know Java. Because you know Java, essentially you know 90% of C Sharp, C++, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, and so many other languages, PHP, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The point I'm trying to make is that once you learn how to program, the language becomes an, a non-issue. When you become a more experienced developer, you will see, well, you see right away once you get in the industry, you're going to be pivoting from framework to framework, from language to language, from library to library. I, in my career, I have written commercial software, been paid to or made money with code I've written using about, I forget the, I, I've lost the exact count, but eight or nine languages, something like that. Java, C Sharp, VB, uh, JavaScript, PHP, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So your career is going to be probably similar in that you're going to be learning multiple languages over time. So if you're going to take any way, anything away from this video, is that uh, first, uh, you should not code in Ruby, and second, that there is no bad language out there for you to choose. It's all very job specific. That's a huge thing. Well, here's one last point I want to point out. Number three, uh, this, and people who watch my channel know this message well. If you look at the top 10 list, there's a whole bunch out there in terms of the top 10 most important languages this year, that year, it's always the same group pretty much better in the top 10. And of this group of top 10 languages, a lot of them are 25, 30 years old or more. Keep that in mind. So you're looking at the usual cast of coding characters, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python. Um, what else is there? No, that's about it. You know, C++, C, there we go. Those are very consistently the languages at the top of the stack. Let's throw in coding languages. Those are all programming languages. Now let's just throw in coding languages. 
Then you look at SQL, which is like 30, 40 year old. I don't know how old it is. I think SQL was developed in what, the 70s? Um, HTML5, HTML rather, CSS. These are coding languages. They're not programming languages, but they're coding languages that are incredibly important. And HTML is like, what, developed in 1993. CSS, like, uh, it became mainstream in 96, 97. You know, so again, what to take away is that if you are concerned, oh, am I going to learn the right language? There's no such thing. Anyway, that's it about C, C++. Uh, yeah, it's a very powerful language. Um, the problem is, from what I'm told, again, I'm not a C++ programmer, but I'll comment anyway. Uh, from having discussions with real C++ programmers, not just YouTube C++ programmers, apparently the big problem with C++ is that it's, it, it, it's, it's designed by committee. Lots of committees are involved in that. Um, apparently it's, it's a bit of a mess. I don't know. So I hear. That's the chatter. Anyway, whatever. If you learn C++, that's great, you know? And you don't find jobs there, which is it's pro probably not possible. You'd probably find all kinds of work. But if you decide you don't like that type of programming, you can go to something else. No big deal, because once you learn how to code, you're in a great position. So I'll answer this last question that I get all the time. Is C++ a good first language to learn? I would argue for most people, no. I think you might want to start off with an easier language like Python. Uh, because it's just a lot less to have to consider initially. And then after that, you learn Python. You can power through shameless self-promotion, my Python course down below. And uh, once you get through that, if you decided you wanted to check out some C++ coding, then it's there for you as well. But do some research in terms of what C++ is actually used for. I gave you an outline just a few minutes ago and uh, decide if you want to do that type of programming. Your choice of learning C++ or not has much more to do with the style or the type of programming you want to do rather than job opportunities or anything else because there's a lot of job opportunities in, uh, in C++. All right, that's it for my 2021. Should you learn C++ or the state of C++ in 2021? I figure I should continue the tradition of the man who knows very little about C++ giving you his two cents. My two cents uh, have some credibility, I think, because I've been a developer since the 1990s. So I, I keep my nerd ears open to what's going on out there with regards to all programming languages, at least the important ones. Bye-bye.